What the fuck is up, Wave High? My bad, man. How are you? Yo, it's good. I'm pretty good right now. Just chilling. Yeah. You know, hype for the hype for the interview. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you for your uh, for your uh, time, man. It's awesome. Yeah, man. bro. I'm honored. I know you're probably a busy a, a busy guy nowadays, right? Or I think before we were, we were uh, during the pre-interview, you said that you're quit you quit your job or you're quitting your job or. Yeah, I quit my job that I was working, my day job that I was working. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. That's fucking tight. What did you do, if you don't mind us asking? Uh, I worked I worked in wide format graphics. So, like, oh. um, you print big signs or banners or uh, these material that you wrap cars with. Oh, so, oh, okay. That's fucking tight. What is that material, yeah. by the way? Mm, vinyl it's called vinyl uh, and there's a bunch of different types you can buy like say you want stickers you can get vinyl for stickers yeah or you can get vinyl for cars specifically or in different laminate types okay you just run them through the different machines based on what the customer wants that's fucking tight so you know how to like make merchandise pretty much oh yeah yeah merchandise i definitely know well i used to do merchandise back in college oh really like, different from my day job a little bit but yeah, yeah i did Oh, that's fucking tough. But you're not in college anymore now. Nah, I graduated. Uh, hey. As soon as COVID started. Yeah, I'm going to Congrats, that's dude. That's <laughs> tight as fuck. So did you enjoy the experience? Is it everything the movies say? Or like, what's going on? <laughs> well, I did I did live in a fraternity uh, for like three of the four years I went to college. Oh, shit. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mostly enjoyed it. Yeah. It was different. It was different than what I expected. Like, I, I was in uh, the city, kind of a, de a pretty populated city yeah. where, where I was in college at a big school. Um, so it was just crazy. Like, I didn't know what to do or what I was even – I didn't know what was going on, do honestly. You, I was just trying to make it by. <laughs> nah, for real. That's, that's all you can do when you don't know anybody, right? Do you have any friends now or, like – Yeah, I have like from, from college. Yeah, from college. Like, living in a frat – um, was interesting because I had 80 people that I lived with at once. Holy then, shit! Yeah, I was living with 80 people, and also uh, you guys share a bathroom and stuff. Oh yeah, when I was a freshman, no. we had bunk beds. Like we slept in one room with 16 people in one room when I, my first year of college. Dude, that's nuts, man. Yeah, I just said like you know what, what I'm doing it, so like whatever I guess yeah. is, is what it is. Fuck. Well, I mean, it sounds like you had fun. You obviously gained knowledge because you have a diploma now, right? Are you yeah. when are you gonna be Doctor Wave High? Bruh, well, I'm in school right now, so. Oh shit! So it's coming. <laughs> Damn. Something like that. Hell Something yeah. Something like that. That's cool, man. Well, congratulations. We'll be cheering you on for sure. That's tight. Yes, sir. Um. So you i mean on the grounds of college i don't or school i guess you have a song called degrassi which is tight by the way which yeah, is a really good know. one um you enjoyed the show or what nah you know no. what like, <laughs> <laughs> nah nah like i had i had a uh, i had made the song basically and um it was kind of like i was just screwing around but this homie, the homie that mixed that EDM song, same shit, uh, he told me, like, oh, you need to drop this song. Because at this point, when when I made Degrassi, that was my first song that I dropped on my own. Like, I didn't oh, have okay. someone else convince me to drop it. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I started. It's like, other people are like, yo, you need to drop this because it's good. And I was like, sure, I guess, like, if you do it, I'll do it. But after that started, um, I had my own song, and he's like, drop this song. Like, whatever you do, drop this one. And I'm like, all yeah. right, sure. So... I had rapped about Wheelchair Jimmy because, like, I, I had Drake. Like, I knew about Drake for a minute. Uh, and, like, One Tree Hill. Like, I know the show One Tree Hill, and it was from that same era. And I yeah. just kind of like the throwback. So, I said I said Wheelchair Jimmy. So, I'm like, yeah, that's the name, Degrassi. That's uh, tight, man. Just had to sh show respect, I guess. That's cool. So, when you, when you meet Drake, you ever going to show him this? Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, yo, you got you got to peep this song I wrote, man. Like, hey, check this out. Would you 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 would you would want to collab with Drake, yeah or no? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Would you guys make like a hard ass bop, you think, or like something soulful? Um, I guess it would just depend on what beat, what it was. Yeah. But if I was in the studio with Drake, I'll just be going crazy. Yeah, just going I'll just be trying to one up him, honestly. Right. You're like, I <laughs> actually got to go back in. I th I thought something different. <laughs> That's cool, man.
um, what do you think about actors or like people of different mediums almost trying to transfer to be like more diverse in their career portfolio like Drake from Degrassi or even like Mark Wahlberg into acting because he was a rapper before he was an actor and then Drake was an actor before he was a rapper yeah I think it's genius honestly uh, I would like to do that myself yeah like, what would you like to do a acting so from a rapper yeah, to acting like to be, yeah well I would just like to do it, do it all. For at me, once. I love challenges. Yeah. yeah at once. Like, oh, if the opportunity shit. presents itself. Yeah. And I would definitely be down because one of the things that actually helped me with rapping was I was never a theater kid, like, growing up. I never did drama or whatever. But mm. in college, I had an elective course, and I took one of the theater classes. And we would we would walk in the class and start doing – he's like, all right, so you're going to walk in straight lines and change your elevation. And basically, like, I think the point of the whole exercise was to make people uh, realize that some things don't matter. Like, you don't have to be too, you don't have to think too much about what you're doing. Like, if you just do something, you got to act like you're in a different world. So that helped me out a lot, actually taking that drama class. Yeah. Because I read the scripts, and then, like, if I forgot the script, I would just start screaming. Like, in really? my songs, I would, oh, wow. I would be in front of the class. They're like, all right, it's your turn to go up. I'm like, yep, let's go. <laughs> Damn. Well, that's... Yeah, there were some theater kids in there, too, and I was like, yo, I know these theater kids have been doing it for, for a bit, but I'm going to come in here and try to do my best, you know? Like, were you doing, just... were you doing like, plays and stuff? Yeah, that was for the class. We had to do, like, at the end that's of the class. That's cool. I, I was playing uh, this dude, Mark Mark Rothko, who's, like, a yeah. famous painter. Oh, okay. He's an alcoholic or something, oh, so wow. I loved it. That's tight. up with the, uh, this dude that was, like, 40, like, going back to college. And he loved it, so him and I were homies off of that, because I was like, all right, like, if you want to get serious, like, I'm down, bro. Like, let's just have fun and go crazy. That's cool. So do you, yeah. now, you, you go to school in your hometown, or did you have to move for that? Uh, I went to school in Seattle, so oh, okay. that was probably, like, 40 minutes away from my hometown. Oh, okay. That's not, I was yeah. going to say, did your, like, parents ever come and watch you and stuff? Yeah, no, it wasn't like that. Like, no, it wasn't that serious? Class. Okay, yeah, I was like, was just I'm picturing like at the end of like school, you're like, all right, everybody, <laughs> go to the theater. You <laughs> no. want to see this play? <laughs> no, nah, I, I didn't become a thespian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, for I, sure. I, I just was, the, I was just going to have fun with it, you know? Yeah. Like, that was just my mentality. Like, That's cool. It helps you get out of your zone, man. That's super yeah, sick. Yeah, it helped me with music. That's yeah. I was starting to make like the songs that I thought were good. It was like during that time in my life. So I'll never forget kind of how uh that helped me yeah no that's fucking tight so you do you enjoy like pop culture and stuff like that or you just kind of like stick to like underground more tones and stuff i love pop culture yeah i, I love uh reading and just taking in information who I'm are on, sorry go, go ahead i'm big on like knowing about things like i don't know about things necessarily to the sense of like uh I want to tell people like what is right or whatever, but I just like to know about it in case so I can at least have an opinion. On yeah. Something. If it ever happens, really you'll be like, this is what I know. know. Yeah. 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 For sure. If I don't know about it, then it's probably better to not say anything. Dude. Yes. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> people, people don't get that. I think, I mean, I, I, I can name a fucking ton of people who were just talk out of their ass and they're like, <laughs> Oh yeah, this happened. This happened. It's like, okay, where, like, how, what do you mean? Yeah, shit's exactly. wild wait what you can say what you can say well what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> dead ass so are you are you watching any like popular shows right now or anything that we should check out you said that you are, are reading should we check out any authors that that you're on um, about right now i mostly i mostly watch formula one i would advise formula one uh, anyone, oh that's cool yeah like if you like science or math or engineering money um like really intense competition uh you might like formula one and it's getting a better audience in North America now. It's yeah. very popular around the world. But the reason that I like it is because all the cars, there's only 20 seats in the world. So, like, you have to be the best. Well, you don't necessarily have to be in the best because you, it could be, like, a political decision on who drives the car. Really? There's only 20 seats. Yeah. Wow. It's, it can be about money. It's very coveted seats. And yeah. you have to, it's, the intensity is insane, right? Your yeah. life's on the line. And they engineer the car every race. So wow. you have the top minds in the world having like an arms race of engineering for the vehicle before they put it on the grid. And then every yeah. weekend you get a test day and it's like milliseconds. So I didn't even know I liked it until I saw the Netflix documentary and then I got hooked. That's cool. So, yeah. 
that's something I would t- I would say if anyone's like wants to maybe check out some sports or something like mm. that, that I just got onto and I love it. Would you ever want to do that like later in your career or like even now just start racing somehow? Yeah, definitely casually. I yeah, don't think that that'd I would be fun. Do it yeah, maybe not professionally, but to just go around the track, you know what I mean? That'd be yeah, fun. Yeah, we have the karting places down in my pl- in my home, so sometimes me and my roommates will like put a bed up or something. Dang, that's cool. Damn. Whoever loses has to clean the kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> like that. Yeah, that would fucking suck. I remember having roommates and cleaning up after everyone. Like fuck y'all. Yeah, that's the lifestyle right now. <laughs> uh, are you uh are you like single or do you have a do you have a love or Nah, I'm single. Okay. So it's just you and like the boys. Just me and the boys. Hey, shouts out the boys. All right, that's yeah. cool. So do you yeah. uh do you, I've seen you have a lot of anime oriented stuff. Do you watch anime? I would say I mostly like anime culture i'm yeah. not like a huge stan of anime but yeah. what i will say about anime is that i'm like an artist like a drawing artist yeah so the biggest influence that anime has has had on me is through you know like drawings and the style of it yeah uh but the, i did my big brother when i was young he had me watch spirited away so uh, and i remember when i saw spirited away like it really just kind of get it gave me these ideas these thoughts that like i've never had when i was a kid like yeah it's imagination like i couldn't believe how someone made the thing you know like with all these crazy characters no it's really fucking insane to look at all the like little nooks and crannies of the drawing and be like wow like someone put this into life you know like yeah it's so fucking I incredible drew- so I always drew like anime and liked it, and I kind of try to think of my life in a sense of that way, like kind of not limited by the bounds of reality in some ways. So that's the, my the main thing with anime. But I've seen a few shows. Like I love Kakiguri with the little puzzles and stuff. Yeah, that's like, that's one. That, that one's I liked, interesting uh, as fuck. One Punch and My Hero. I've seen most of the basic ones. And I've been watching this one with spiders with my. That my oh, the watching. where the where the girl's a spider. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching that one. It That's crazy. interesting as fuck, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, didn't I know what was going on, but it was I didn't crazy. know how they were gonna do any of it. But I mean, they're making it work. It's cute. It's fun. It's a, it's a really good time if you just let go. You know, it's, it you can, if you just had to like let yourself loose. Like, it's like with those uh, Avengers movies and shit like that. It's tough to lose yeah, yourself just... in the content. You can't think too hard about it. <laughs> um. So you said that you're an artist. How long have you been drawing for and stuff like that? I've been drawing my whole life. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is, I'm not a super skilled technical artist, but mm. when I make up for in my skill, I uh, as a technical artist, like being able to imagine uh, shapes in 3D, uh, I use the computer. So I'm good at Photoshop and Illustrator. Oh, and that's those cool. Sorts of things. So that helps me out a lot. Yeah. I'm okay, but I have a lot of respect for people that are truly gifted artists and can mm. just imagine things. Uh, like off top of paper yeah. because it takes practice. Like you had to know the, the body and the, the whole anatomy of a human, per- of, of anything really that you're drawing. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's a lot of like, it's like a lot of reference though. You would think, right. I mean, a lot of people just kind of like look to their right and you know, yeah, but you, you can practice it a lot. Yeah. If you practice it a lot, you will get better with drawing. So, well, fuck yeah, man. I don't. I haven't dumped enough time to do that to where I think I'm some expert. But I have my style and what works for me, and it actually helped. It started my rap career was my drawings. Yeah, you do a lot of your cover art, right? Yeah, I've done probably fifty percent of my cover art. Yeah, and I've been getting some good commissions for like other popular artists, which is awesome for me because it's kind of like, at least for me personally, that's my favorite way to work with someone is just off respect and yeah. some sort of mutual gain so i like that i can offer a photo uh like art so that type of thing hell yeah dude no that's tight as fuck it's like an exchange <laughs> yeah yeah um so you want to venture in all of that you want to venture into art acting music is there anything else that you you know have your heart set on you have a lot going on your hands are in a lot of things well i love finance <laughs> finance you like you like money right are you into yeah. Are you into like stocks and stuff? Did you buy Doge? <laughs> well, uh, yes, I'm into stocks. Yeah. No, I did not buy Doge. No. Um, but I'm into like assets. Yeah. Uh, that produce cash flow. Like, for example, a theory that I have on music is that your music, 
your songs are like assets because you own them and you you have rights to them, so you get royalties. Uh, just like if you have a house, uh, the value can increase over time. So I just kind of want to have ownership over the things that I have and produce a life that is sustainable for myself. Like I'm kind of in control. Yeah. So that's one of the, my main motivations for finance is because I, as an artist, like I don't really like to be limited by those types of things that are, you know, like I'm stressing about these things that I could have fixed if I was smarter about my uh, decisions. So that's most, so now there's a lot of different ways that I like finance, but in general, that's my main goal with why why I want finance. I, I kind of do like minimalism. Yeah. And just think that if you have if you have gratitude for what you have and just are more for enjoying your life about the people who you're with and the things that you do versus what you spend, that's kind of my philosophy. But I still want the financial security to be able to live that life. One hundred percent. You want to live comfortably. Yeah. Do you plan on having like a family and stuff, or are you just securing money for like you in the long yes. run? Yes. Yeah. I'd love to have a family. That's one of my life goals for sure. Oh, so, that's awesome. Man. How many kids would yeah. you want? Um, I guess it would depend on how much money I had. Oh shit. Like, I would at least I would at least want two, but if yeah. I was uh quite successful, I Big could see myself in. having more. Yeah. Yeah, but it just it's hard to it's hard to, you know, think about it when I don't have those Sorry, and I don't have the option really. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you're not you're not really seeking that at the moment either, though. So it's not really a huge thing. No, yeah, I'm not right now. Just kind of doing like, your own thing, yeah. Yeah, I can get this. I like I'm intense. I'm a really intense person, so I feel like I would get really intense with my family. Yeah. Like kick like even now with my cousin. Like I like to hang out with my cousin, and he he does tennis. So like I'll just go train with him. Like no, I'll put I'll drop anything to go train with my fan. That's cool. You know, just cause like it's important to me. Yeah, no, that I mean that that creates nice memories too. So you yeah. you were talking about um, monetary. Uh, do you uh, and like feeling good about like what you're doing with it as well? Do you believe in like karma then? Like uh, what goes around comes around. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, I don't. I don't believe karma is like a real thing. Yeah. As a matter of like. Um, you know, like practicalness. Yeah. Like, for example, if I'm nice to you, then, uh, like I'll say like, I don't think karma is a science, but I think it exists. Like if you're yeah. polite to people, it's going to come back to you, but I don't think that it's like an actual, uh, thing. Yeah, like people like, are just back polite to you because you're being polite. Like, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just like a relationship. Just being a being normal nice. person. I, yeah. I don't think that the stars align and then like you get karma points and yeah. you like spend them or something. Well, I feel you on that. Um, talk to me about like good and evil. Do you believe in good and evil? Um, I guess like it's a hard question for me to answer because it really all it depends on what you think is good and what you think is evil and what you come from. Yeah. Um, uh, I just think personally, I think like I like you or I don't, and the yeah. same goes for everyone else. But good and evil, I don't really know. For sure, for certain. If I get, I don't feel like I could answer that with confidence. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, tell me about the Yu-Gi-Oh run that you had on Instagram. What was that yeah. about, and when can we expect those cards to be released? Okay, that was when I was making music, and no one wanted to listen to my music because who who wants to listen to music when you got no followers and you yeah. got no one that knows about you? Yeah. And you have. But no you're followers. making good music. You know, I mean, maybe it's in so back, frustrating. Yeah. It's so frustrating. Exactly. So I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? How are, how is anyone going to care about me? I'm, well, I know Photoshop yeah, and I know music that I like and mm. I know music that other people like. So I'm just going to start dropping Yu-Gi-Oh cards and yeah. I'm going to make it a competition. So when I was first dropping my music to get people to come to my page, I would do the Yu-Gi-Oh cards weekly. Uh, and cool. I just hustled it, and every week I would drop it, and it would be good with reposts and that sort of thing, and it just worked all right. And That's at the cool. same time, I would drop my songs on the side. Yeah. And I think people kind of learn about me more as an artist, like that I actually p took time with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. If you read the descriptions and look at them, you can tell I took time, and I knew the artists, uh, and that I care about like this music and underground, and that and that I it was in my passion, so. I think it helped me in that sense. People realize what I was really about. Yeah. This is just hearing a song of mine. That's cool, man. No, I really, I really dig all of them. They were really interesting. I didn't know you did that at all. 
Um, yeah, thanks. Thank yeah, you. no, for, for sure, for sure. And it wasn't just one either. You had, like, sets. Fucking insane. Yeah, I did a set every week, Fucking like, insane. Underground Legends or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, it was sick <laughs> as fuck. I called it. I really, do, you, do you play Yu-Gi-Oh! at all? I played the Xbox game, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I yeah. was nasty. Yeah, you stick with it. Okay, you don't. You don't. You don't play now, though. No, I don't. I don't play the physical trading card okay. game. Okay. Well, they have a they have an app called Duel Links. If you're ever interested in getting back in. Okay. I play. I play avidly. Avidly. Yes. I'm ready. I'm ready for that, war. Though. Back in the day, I used to watch. Yo. It when I was young. Yeah, when I was really young. Dude, me fucking too. I would record it on VCR, like. <laughs> that's how old I am. I'm I'm fucking ancient, but like yeah, I you know put it on funny? tape. I just like the drawings, like the anime too. Like I don't. Yeah, even know no, it's so good. It. The, dude, the cards were what drew me in. I was like, these cards are fucking sick. Like <laughs> blue eyes, white, red eye, dude. Red, I have the I have the Funko Pops of both those dragons. I fucking uh, love that shit. But yeah, I I rewatched the whole series when I had my uh when I had my daughter. I was, I was watching that oh, shit okay. every fucking day. Like, <laughs> I was you yelled the fuck out. Um, tell me about Oliver Francis, man. Who is who is he to you, and what's what's going on there? I love Oliver Francis. Um, when I was in college, like, I just remember my mental health would just go up and down because yeah. I was my college was so competitive. Mm. Like, it was really hard, uh, and I was a good student. But I just felt like I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I loved Oliver Francis's music. Like, me and my homie, I had another homie in the same position who I used to make music with, which is a crazy story. Like, no one knows about that. Like, no Yo, one tell knows us that. that Give us that exclusive. Like, I had this I had this song, I had this mi account that I made music with one of my frat buddies. And yeah. we would just screw around, like, make garbage. But we made some decent songs. And one of our songs on SoundCloud went up, got 100K. Oof. And we like, we did not, we were like, oh, like, yo, what's good, what's good, bro? Like, yeah. We were so high. It's like, we're it you're quitting everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> it died out and we broke up. Like, our music career together, oh, no. like, it didn't work out. But he was my uh, boy. Yeah. Okay, we would bump cool. Oliver Francis. And the yeah. thing about Oliver Francis that I always remember is he was a janitor until he was, I think, uh, 23 or 26. And he was a janitor to fund his music career. And yeah. I saw it as an inspiration because, like, I was someone that was in college and maybe supposed to go get, like, a traditional job and and all these things. And when in reality, I looked up to someone like Oliver Francis, who is, a, you know, a janitor uh, yeah. working just the grind to chase his dreams. And I always respected that more than anything. And I loved his music. And it was just an example for me. And that was before I even knew that I was going to be a rapper type myself. Yeah. Um. So he's just a huge inspiration for me to take a take a risk and bet on yourself. Hell yeah, dude. That's fucking tight. That's awesome to have idols. Um I saw you have fifty K on Spotify. Almost fifty K, I'm sorry. You have like forty eight, I think seven something, but it's yeah. right around it might as well be fifty K. So that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Um you. but you only have like ten thousand followers or so plus on like Instagram. Like, what do you think the translation is with fans that go to listen but don't actually follow the artist? Um, I just think that you have levels of consumers yeah. for music. Like, you're gonna have people who are interested in being fans, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have people that don't even know your know about you, and they mm -hmm. listen to your music. And I don't think you can necessarily say that there's a percentage. Mm. I think it definitely depends on the age of the audience. I think when you're younger, it's a lot easier to uh, look up to these characters because it's just awesome. It's just those hobbies. You attach yourself to those sort of hobbies a lot when you're younger and you don't have as much pressure from paying your bills and those sort of things yeah. to kind of – to kind of pull you into a more, I don't know, sober mindset or traditional mindset. So I think it's really easy to attach to those things when you're younger. Like myself, I used to be doing fan art of my favorite rappers, when I, and that's what kicked me off drawing. But when I got into college and was a bit older, I would be maybe more stressed about like, real oh, life damn, shit. What am I gonna do? Like when I like, yeah. What am I gonna do? This and that. And it took me a while to even do what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like the journey so far has been long. Like I had to. I thought about a lot of different things, and I still am to this day. You know, always having to weigh the different options. But. Yeah, for sure. 
Damn. No, that, that's definitely real. Um, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me about League of Legends. Bro, I love League. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tell me about it. Cause I'm, I, I'm, I can time. honestly say I've never played it. I know nothing about it. So why should someone like me get into it? Tell me about it. Sell me the game. Okay, so if you like something that's intense and it's going to take your brain and lock it in, like take your brain and just grab a hold of it the yeah. whole time. It's like real-time chess, and you want to test your willpower and your ability to not get frustrated, and your you versus yourself, you got to lead mm -hmm. because no one plays around on something as rigged, and you can just burn hours into it. It's, it's okay. addictive. It's right. super addictive. Is it, can I get it on Mac? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, It'll turn have... you into the worst version of yourself. Really? Too. I don't know. Among yeah. Us has already done that. Oh, trust me, trust me. Bro, when I play with Seven, I really get upset. <laughs> but I, but I do love the fact that I get to hang out with people and like talk to them. Yeah, uh, that is cool. I've seen you. Uh, something. I've seen you streaming, man. That's awesome. How's that? How's that going? How does that make you feel when you're streaming? What even made you uh, do that? I just, I just thought like, I would love to be a streamer. <laughs> yeah. And then I said. Let's, you know, let's try it out and see what's good. I, I can make graphics, and I think that I'll be good on streaming on camera. So I'm just going to try it. Oh, Developed yeah. a, I got affiliate, which isn't terrible, and it's like anything, you know, any of those goals that I have, I feel like if I didn't at least try before I, you know, curled over, then I would regret my, I would regret it. So yeah. I just I just had to, had to send it. That's awesome, man. I think I, I think I follow you. I've dropped in on a, on a couple for sure. Um, it's good shit. Tell me who's better though at League of Legends, you or Zell is hurt? Zell is definitely worse. Um, hundred <laughs> percent worse. Yeah. And if you want to check, you know, I always I'm always like I like math. And he's science, in he's so. in the chat right now. <laughs> I don't know if so you see it. You can go look at the stats. Yeah. Like, that's what I would say. Like I personally would say that it's worse but if you want to look for yourself like you know he you says he carries you every single game hey stats don't lie stats don't lie i uh, i see i've see, seen you post about it before that shit has got me dying bro yes, sir. that shit is so yes, funny <laughs> it's good to have a, a rivalry though you know someone someone that keeps you going you always want to better yeah. yourself right Nah, I don't play around. You yeah. Know, like, I'm playing to win. That's it. Do you do you play with uh, Prompto? Yeah, me and Prompto go hard. We got good synergy in the bot lane. Prompto's pretty good at video games, isn't he? Yeah, he's like a silent killer, you know? Yeah, we I don't... Playing. He won't, he won't <laughs> talk at all. <laughs> he won't yeah. talk at all. He'll be like, all right, someone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll go back off comms. Like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, that's so funny. I'm happy. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear he does it to us too. Um, so let's get back to the uh, music real quick. Talk to me about the song songs that are similar to Abundance. There seem to be few and like far between in your catalog. Do you agree with that statement or no? Yeah, definitely. Do you think to like maybe write that kind of music, you have to be in the mindset or like do you have to actually experience? that shit firsthand and what i'm talking about audience is like sadder songs more kind of emotional feeling kind of songs um is that something that you can just spout out of nowhere or do you have to go through something like that um i definitely have to go through mm. like my songs are always fueled by how i'm feeling because i haven't been writing most of my music for the past couple years i've mm. just been kind of going off the top uh but the reason that i have less of them is because they're harder to make, I yeah. think, uh, and it takes it takes a different type of mixing. Um, and I would like to, and I think that I am able to make them, and I will make more of them in the future. But if I'm tr if I'm explaining my emotions, and that are that, that personal like that, I want them to also sound how I want it to feel. You know, like I want it to invoke the emotion because just because I say it doesn't make it true to other people and I want to make it true and the ones that I have dropped I feel like you can you feel that when you listen to it oh yeah no for sure it, it's, definitely it literally catches your like ear because you're like what I, I had to I had to like rewind it I had to like make sure it was like actually you because I was like damn this is tight like, 
<laughs> It'd be doing that shit sometimes. I'll like, I'll play a single and then, like, fucking yesterday, it was playing me, like me, after every single time. And I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. I'm trying. <laughs> so I'd have to, like, go, like, on, like, shuffle all and shit. But yeah, shit, shit is super hard. Your catalog is sick as fuck. Um, talk to me about songs like Forget It and Bass Hit, though, because there seems to be a direction that you really enjoy. There was actually another one I heard before this on the stream that I hadn't heard before that was uh, super, like, EDM kind of style or dubstep or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, what makes you do songs like that? Is that something that you've always wanted to do, or do people approach you with that? Or, uh, Well, I like... EDM yeah. moderately. Like I do enjoy mm. EDM and EDM concerts and the vibe. Yeah. They're uh, having fun like e for sure. Yeah, like <sighs> there's this rapper Goldlink. And yeah. he has this song called Falcons. Uh, and I've heard it a few times, like some or Vince Staples. Like mm. kinda has that EDM influence on some of his songs that popped off. Mm. And I've always been wanting that. Uh, and the ones that I have out currently are a bit more serious. And those are mostly for people that message me and would say, Hey, uh, I want to get your vocals on these on this track. Yeah on this track So I'll just send them like random stuff and it, it comes out like that, you know, like that's the cool mix all They the mix stuff it and stuff. Yeah, there. for sure But a reason that I did it is to kind of open the door to what I really wanted to do because I haven't Captured the sound that I truly want to with the EDM combination and what I really like like there's a song called chicken dinner uh, like winner winner chicken di like it goes hard and it's an EDM rap song and I want to do more stuff like that but you know you got to start somewhere it's like with yeah. music you got to show people what what you can do and then eventually you might actually you might actually have the ideas in your head like, yeah and get them out like you want to I think that's a, probably the hardest thing about music for all artists that makes up can relate is you have this idea but actually transforming that idea into something tangible in the way that you think that it exists is so difficult it really so truly is exploring it yeah that's cool get there no that's super fucking it's they they sound so fun like they're super fun songs shit is tight yeah and it's different stuff for everyone we have do you have more coming like edm style yes uh, yes cool. i do i have a i have a pretty actually one that is bigger than all the ones i've done before yeah uh with a pretty popular edm artist so i'm really excited and on the same album there's some uh rappers on it that are that i'm honored to be on the same oh that's cool uh, album so i got super like i'm super excited for that yeah and i'm also excited to see how my song uh stacks up to the some of the best rappers on the album yeah some of the like really popular ones you know so that'll be fun man well we're excited yeah. to hear we'll definitely share links everywhere i'm usually uh, i usually repost all the people i fuck with so if you're if you're posting it, I'll repost for sure. Yeah. Yo. You, you have reposted mine. Thank you. Yeah, of too. course, of I course. I do appreciate that a lot. No worries, man. I'm so, I don't I don't know if I can get you enough clout because I think you have more followers than me on Instagram. <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm trying here, man. Um, in Triple Threat, someone says, "Eat some cereal out her butt." Do you endorse this personally? <laughs> Personally, I mean, I can't say that I've tried it, so if I haven't tried it, yeah. Then but it's on your song. That is true, but I didn't say it. I know, but you you cleared it. I guess I guess implicitly I co-signed eating cereal out, but but is I that something that you would that you would try? Uh, you know, I guess it depends. Depends <laughs> on the girl. Yeah, she has to has has to be clean, obviously. I'm not the type to say like hard no to most things yeah you know? you're down but to try it at least if once ask me, if yeah. you ask me and i'm there that mm -hmm. doesn't mean i'll say yes yeah that's <laughs> true it's got to be the right the right the right one it's like making music when you hear that beat mm -hmm. you know you're hopping on that's you true like shit it, that's true like, nah, that ain't the one, bro. i know i think I, for, I forgot i was talking to someone recently um when you get a beat do you usually know within like 10 seconds if you like it yeah, like it's like it's usually so beats, quick yeah when people show me beats i'm i'm always like yo like i don't know how to be not be rude but like i don't need to hear more than 10 seconds yeah i'll be listening to it like 40 seconds i'm like hey bro look, let me be honest like i don't really listen to the beats this long but yeah. it's cool I, I i i i do the whole this isn't what i'm looking for but i look forward to future submissions oh yeah <laughs> Um, talk to me about creating your latest track. I believe it's Atlantis with Prompto. Yes, sir. How did that How did that go about? What's What's happening there? 
So me and Prompto were like I had known Prompto from an Instagram chat for mm-hmm. a bit, but like I didn't really know about him. Like we were just kind of mutual acquaintances. Mm-hmm. And then as time goes on, I think there's a certain respect you can develop for someone when you have genuine intentions on getting to know them before like actually uh like asking them for something. So like I I had probably been ch- chopping it up for like months before I even really even knew that much about Prompto. Mm-hmm. And then I started checking it out and like talking to him more directly. And I think we were playing League or just on DMs like sh- chopping it up. Uh, and I had sent him that open because I can't recall who was this who said to send who even started the collab. Yeah. I don't even remember if it was me or him. But we were just you know having a good time chatting yeah and i sent him atlantis uh which was a song that i did not intend to release because usually i scream or i rap fast like that was just me talking one day oh wow some like feelings about girls or whatever like i was just kind of venting Uh and pronto hopped on it and i was like yo pronto snapped on this yeah killed it for sure and we dropped it it was an accident almost but it went great no it's it's a good accident for sure we all enjoy the accident yeah, and uh, I have like a, some another track that I have been working on Prompto too. That's oh really? That's yeah, cool. That's, When's that? Yeah, uh, the date? Hmm. I don't know when I. I don't know. Uh, Hopefully a month or two. Oh, okay, cool. Well, yeah. we'll There's circle no back in two months. I, that's the thing I like about it. I guess working with people that I kind of homies with is we make try to make it right instead of just yeah you know, or force, forcing it out there yeah for you have to you have to like make sure it's perfect on all fronts everyone needs to be happy with the project for sure yeah you got to stand by what you put out dead ass um talk to me about systematic recklessness that seems to be your no. only it <laughs> seems to be your only your only project there's like multiple tracks on this would you call it a mixtape or ep what do we what do we call that that's an ep that's an ep me. And that's, mixtape. and that's where Gahina, Gah- I don't know Gahina, how, Gahina, Gahina, he was the guy that started my rap career, yeah, so basically, he had heard one of my songs that I posted on SoundCloud, mm-hmm. and was like, yo, I want to work with you, and I was super hyped on that, because uh, I never had someone that wanted to work with me before, so I said, it's a good sure, feeling. let's do it, yeah, yeah, and I was selling, uh, at the time, I was selling Dorito powder, like I was selling uh something called Autolyzed yeast extracts. I was oh. shipping, uh, shipping logistics for uh, North America and between U.S. and Canada, <laughs> and I would work my internship like grind. I would go to college and I would grab my internship. So when I made those songs, I would just hop after work after work, just like say some random shit, um, and send him the stems. And then he's like, "All right, bro, this is the project. Like, this is what I made with all your vocals. Yeah. We're gonna drop it." What do you want your name on Spotify to be? And I was like, I'm gonna go with Wave because that was what I wanted to be at 15. Yeah. And he's like, Nah, it's too basic. And then so Wave, Wave high. high. That's the yeah, that's, that's just, the that's the creation. Yeah, that's just the first thing in my head. Wow. Like, we want we're putting you on Spotify. What's your name? Wave. They're like, Nah, it's too basic. So I was just like, What's clever? Wave high. That's he's wild. Like, it might be Wavehi. I'm like, I guess that sounds kind of cool. Wavehi <laughs> is that? I mean, <laughs> what do you me what too. do you prefer? whatever someone wants to say because maybe someone's first uh language is english and they're yeah. gonna mispronounce it uh-huh. and i just want to be accommodating to people that damn don't know you make me feel like an asshole because people will be saying <laughs> like ani i'm like nah bitch it's oni <laughs> are you dumb no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but nah oh you're a sweetheart you that because yeah because i would i would i would be like no 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 but what what wave high all right that's cool that's yeah. a sick I mean, it's origin to story be wave high but yeah he's funny funny what yeah, they fine. Now, if we ever yeah, we ever do a song again i'll be like shout out what they yes sir. <laughs> it's like sway lee lee sway same thing <laughs> <laughs> yes that's tight <laughs> um what is your uh, favorite song off the record or off the EP with Gahina? Um, penalty. Penalty. What for? Yeah. Because I made it with my homeboy. <laughs> okay. Fair. Oh yeah. What's your favorite? We just heard it and we're like, yo, this shit slaps. Like, it's not even the listening back to it; it's the memory that I have while making. Of it. making it. That's cool. Yeah, we're, we're like, yo, what is fire? Damn, that's tight. That's a that, that that's a vibe right there. Damn, I need to stop stuttering. 
Um, what's your favorite song you've ever made? Period. Oh. Hmm. Probably West Side. West because Side? it did the most for me. Yeah. Like, maybe I don't like it. Maybe I don't like it the most, but that was just one that everyone loves. And yeah. they're like, yo, you made West Side. <laughs> So, That's cool. I like that one in the sense of what it helped what it helped me do in my career in my career, I guess. But mm -hmm. um I guess I haven't really thought of it. So maybe some of the songs that I make and I don't release and I just live to myself. You know, like yeah. I feel like people live to your music and sometimes I'm living to some of those songs that I haven't dropped in. Yeah. It's like a part of me that I I can have to myself and just like really lit really like lit read back on my journal or whatever yeah like damn i was feeling some type of way when i when i was spitting this like are you go do you have plans to release everything you've ever made or do you you gonna leave some like in the vault forever yeah some will be in the vault forever definitely. damn definitely gonna be in the vault forever. okay all right i hear you um what is the i mean what prompted the creation of covid19 the song um obviously COVID-19 or... so I got that yeah. song because I and Akai wanted a Yu-Gi-Oh card and I said if you want a Yu-Gi-Oh card you have to collab with me ah uh, got him got him got him <laughs> that's cool though. and I was on FaceTime with my homie who I was my homie with from high school in the, my uh closet of my house because like I just wanted to go I just wanted to scream how loud mm. and I told my homie, I was like, hey, bro, like, just know if you're on FaceTime with me while I'm rapping, I'm going to be saying some crazy stuff. So uh, <laughs> so just get ready. So it's like I had an audience. Yeah. And I was trying to put on for my homie. And I was just, I was like, I heard all these people screaming. And I knew that I could do it as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that came in my head, I'm going to leave this body in a dump truck. <laughs> and then after that, it was history. Yeah. Because people are dying, you know? Mm -hmm. Like everyone is dying uh, to COVID nineteen and like yeah. the reality of life and shit was just hitting me at that time, mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk some shit. I, I was just pissed off, like yeah. you know, people don't want to listen to me. Like I'm just gonna scream some shit, you know, like fuck it, <laughs> as loud as you can, <laughs> you know, like yeah, not for sure. Was, it was just a quick get it out. Ship it, stamp it, send it. Have you have you been staying healthy? Uh, mentally or physically? I mean, have or, you gotten sick from Corona or like honestly all? Yeah, are you staying healthy mentally too? Uh, usually. Good. Like sometimes, sometimes I feel maybe bad, but I think yeah. that's normal. And I think like, yeah. Yeah, you just talk talk about it. Maybe. I like, dread I dread existence sometimes. If I think too much oh, about yeah, it, I get I get really <laughs> sad. But yeah, that's a, that's I actually one of the questions, so we're gonna get into that later. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, physically, yeah, I like to go to the gym. I love going to the gym because back when I used to get pit, like back in college, like I was always like, man, these girls are doing me dirty. <laughs> like, like what's good, bro? Like, I'm yeah, so sad. my life is so, over. Yeah, yeah, but I learned, you know, like I learned from those things mm -hmm. and just like funny things in the past. And I started going to the gym, and I like the gym. Physic for my physical health and my mental health, actually, yeah. because it's a time for me to just spend time with myself. It is, you know? huh? It's not that often when people, you can just be alone and mm -hmm. test your abilities and skills, and I just like, I just like to see what I can do. And the other thing I've realized is I think people respect me more without even having spoken to me. Because from, it's just like, it's from, just an implied thing, like, you can't buy uh, fitness and stuff. Yeah. So maybe it's helped me in meeting people and just being confident with my with myself. Well, that's so, cool, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, congrats on feeling like that. Yeah. I'll be going to the gym. No, no results. No results whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, well, I was pissed when I first did it. Like I yeah. wasn't on a mission. It's was, it, it can be annoying starting out for sure. It makes yeah. you want to give up. Straight up. Cause you're looking for instant gratification, and it's not something that can just happen. Yeah. I'll tell you what, getting fat can just happen. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no issue there. You fucking, you eat food, you're gonna get fat. No question. Like, yeah, shit is science. crazy. That's, that's my approach. Shit is crazy. I, I, I just gotta sleep all day. Then I won't have to, <laughs> <laughs> have to go anywhere. 
Um, do you believe in ghosts? No. No? Do you believe in aliens? Yes. Why? Um, I think that the universe is infinite. Uh, yeah. And the way that life happens is that a planet orbits a star. Mm. Uh, so, like, a mass orbits a star where the temperature uh, can have, like, inhabitable life. So, I just think the odds that there's a planet in an orbit of a star where the temperature can yeah. uh, have life is likely to, exi to exist in an infinite universe. So, just on the simple fact that I, I think that the conditions are there. I think that there's life outside of Earth. Yeah. Do you think aliens just, are are here now, or they're still just like chilling somewhere else? Um. Do I think aliens are here now? Yeah. I guess it depends. Like, no, I don't think aliens no. are here now. Okay. Because I was gonna say maybe if there's a meteor crash, but but then if there's an alien, if there's an alien life form that can survive the heat of a meteor strike, like the heat and the impact of a meteor strike, maybe when the meteor hit, like some sort yeah. of uh, life form was on Earth. But at that point, if it's been a few thousand years, then is it still alien or is it, is it an Earth uh, species? <laughs> if it's, I, I think if it's from Earth, it should be from Earth. Like if it's, 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 it's like if you're born in like a different country, you're like that citizen, you know? Yeah, so like if you were an intergalactic traveler and you had a ch if you had a child on a new planet, is it still alien? That's an Earthling at that point. That's an Earthling, yeah. So because alien so no. alien just describes like something unknown nature, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah. So no, I don't I don't think there's a any aliens right now. All right, but but maybe okay. uh Dwayne Johnson. He's you think he's an alien? He's buff. He's, he's, he's fucking huge. <laughs> I don't know how you get that. <laughs> he's, he's fucking huge. Yeah, would you vote for him for uh, president? Twenty twenty four. Depends on who he's. He said he's for. gonna that he's gonna run probably. Like I th it's a two party system, so if yeah. he's a democratic uh, yeah. person, like it's likely that I'll vote for him. Uh -huh. But maybe uh, if there is a good candidate in opposition, I would vote for him. Yeah. Vote for the other candidate. I mean, Dwayne. I have to. I studied. My, my degree is political economy. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, like, I'm not super political. I'm yeah. Not like, uh, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you think this? Like, yeah. Screw you. Like, not. Nah, I, I just have read about about a, about it a fair bit. Uh, and I, that's what I like to do. I like to read and just try to understand what they stand for. So. Yeah. Well, without even knowing what his policies suggestions are or what he wants to do i i don't even know yeah but i could see him actually being a pretty good leader yeah i he they did like a a, a, a poll one of these news networks and he posted like on his instagram because he won the poll and he was like if you guys want me to run i will run or whatever the fuck yeah and i'm like like hey. <laughs> he's strong yeah and he's gotta get and he seems to have good character. he seems level level-headed you know um, what are your uh, thoughts on the current state of America? If you can comment on that. Um, I would say like, that's a really big question. And it is a big question. Uh, it's a very broad, broad question. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of tension in America. Yeah. Especially racial tension and economic mm. tensions. And I think there's a lot of different ways that people try to solve it. Right. Mm. Like there's all these different things in all these different areas that people can have a choice on, like the legalization of marijuana, um, the policies of what we're gonna do with, you know, immigration, the policies of how do we get equitable education to different races and different different ethnicities, the idea of, you know, uh, sexuality and sports in high school. Um, and I think the state of it is, is hard it's hard to see all the shootings that are going on and i think it's tragic and it can happen anywhere and i think it's hard to see people that are abusing their power with racial racially motivated uh issues and i think that it's a problem and we live in a really hard police state like the state of the private prison system we're making profit off of prisoners um and how our uh court systems work and put in like putting people in those prisons to make more money 
uh, well, honestly, at the end of the day, like I don't have the solution to all these problems, and there's so many of them, and I just try to do my best to understand how I can be better myself. And I think if I'm gonna change the world, it's doing what I'm doing now and being an artist. And if I ever do have a platform when someone asks me, I'm just gonna do my best because I don't know everything and I don't I don't know the problems, but I I think I know at least a little bit. But it's ter- it's hard to, it's hard to watch, and I'm pr- I'm still proud of being an American, and I guess the ability to have my freedom and do it in my ways. But there's just a there's just a lot that uh, people need to work on, um, and I think people jump so quick to conclusions as well. That's another thing I would like to say. Like you have all of these issues that go down uh, with people in power abusing their power and causing a problem. But a lot of times people will take one instance or one incident and they'll want to extrapolate it for every instant. And they, and they don't, they don't give each other any sort of courtesy or benefit of the doubt. Like, like I think people need to be more compassionate with one another and they need to try to be nicer to each other and more understanding because there's a lot of like toxicity and jealousy that's bred on the internet. And it can be real, it can be hard. Like everyone always wants to say, yes, we, uh, there's this book, Stephen Pinker, Stephen Pinker's Enlightenment Now, where on most metrics, uh, human race and have been getting better. Like poverty's declining, uh, food's increasing, life expectancy's been increasing. Uh, all that is true, but uh, th- with things like social media too, like I, there's an increase of suicides and uh, mental health issues. And I just think, yeah, maybe we need to be more compassionate with each other and and stick up for what we truly believe in. And I know that's a long response. And I could probably talk about it a lot. Of, I could talk about it a lot more. But yeah, that's, that's what can talk saying. about it as much as you want, man. We have, this yeah. is your interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, you make valid, valid, uh, valid points. Like for real. Yeah. Like, Thanks. It's hard. Course. It's really hard to deal with the problems, really. No, it definitely And that's why is. I try to start with myself. I feel like people because... like to uh, weaponize almost like tragedies and then like use it for their gain of like their own beliefs in some ways um, sometimes but yeah like what are you gonna do i guess yeah people will have their views there's some i mean there's like you can argue points and stuff but some people won't ever change their mind no matter what you do which can be frustrating so yeah and i had lived in idaho uh which is mostly right right thinking yeah uh, and i also lived in seattle which is very left super thinking. left thinking yeah so i have been exposed to both yeah uh, yeah well i have a very conservative family and i've i'm i'm like the only one that's not i think i think my sister i think my sister too because she thinks george bush did 9 11 so i think she's rocking that too i don't know <laughs> it's a very it's a very di- diverse uh system we have over here too um <laughs> What do you think should be like the next step if you were president? If I was president, what would I do? Yeah. If you uh, had like a day to do like some change, I mean, obviously you can't okay, fucking get a bill passed. But something. in this magical land, you can run bills for the first day. So. Yeah. Uh, I would legalize marijuana federally. Yeah. Uh, and tax it. So the government can make money on the sale of weed. Uh, and the business doesn't have to be done on the black market, like, you know, exchange in second hands and you can just do the legal transactions, make the legal money off of it, uh, and finance the states. I would look at the cases of criminals who have been, uh, put in prison for marijuana, uh, and most likely release them. I would look at the way that our justice system works, uh, in the private prison system in the for-profit that's crazy huh the private prisons are fucking nuts dude yeah yeah it's insane it, it truly um, it's a, it should be a crime in itself like honest to god <laughs> why are you monetizing suffering it's absolutely incredible yeah it's twisted and um i would definitely look into the uh disparities of like uh racially motivated things like uh just the, broken windows theories and how uh, my, certain minority communities are targeted 
uh, disproportionately affected. Like, no matter what happens, you're always gonna have some sort of that stuff. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that it's possible to live in a completely uh, like uh, everyone shares everything type of society where yeah. everything's perfect. I think that's completely impossible. And if you do think that, then um, it you might have your opinion changed when you when people actually try to practice that thing of like every we're all gonna share and everything's gonna be okay. I think it's difficult because people are self interested and maybe they won't want to contribute to uh, the output like the economic output. Uh, what else would I do? Um, I mean, there's definitely a lot of like I'm not very pra well practiced in it right now. Like I haven't been reading a lot of world politics, so I couldn't speak on the policies of like um the borders yeah i don't i really don't know what's i don't know what's going on um there's the united nations oh uh, you know what i would do what would you i do? would invest in the future economy i think that the globalization of the world is going to increase due to the internet um and the ability for people to exchange is increasing like that's why we have cryptocurrencies right because yeah. The, U the U.S. dollar, like, sometimes it's hard for people to trade stuff, and people want to trade. Like, we want to trade edits for maybe someone across the world, and they can't accept the U.S. dollar, so we yeah. have to find a different way for us to be able to meet in the middle. Yeah. And I think that's going to happen no matter what. So if I was the government, I would find a way to get a piece of that pie and be able to have control over the uh, increased global trade and be forward thinking and think more about electric vehicles and uh, – nuclear uh fission i know that bill gates uh ha has been working on nuclear fission reactors um and try to find more sustainable sources of energy so we don't screw the planet over for our kids uh, yeah that would be terrible yeah that'd be so fucking the, foolish the human ingenuity will surely be tested in the future oh no I doubt think. about it for have sure, you seen not. have you seen interstellar before yeah i've seen it they're like growing corn and they're like we're almost out of corn it's like what the fuck <laughs> you're almost out of corn or no they they have like they have like a famine or some shit but yeah that's some you know this all whoa are you there okay cool i don't know what the fuck just happened um all this like agriculture all like, everything that's happening i feel needs to be planned for the future like you just said so i'm definitely down with president wave high when are you running <laughs> uh maybe like 20 40 hey, 50 nice um what i could I could, do, I could see myself like i studied uh, <coughs> politics and stuff but i couldn't see myself as a career politician if yeah. i came up as a politician yeah you'd have to do it later on like arnold schwarzenegger do it as a rapper or yeah. something like i wouldn't want to come up with a suit and tie like it's not my style yeah no for sure for sure that's fucking that's so funny though that'd be awesome dude if you ever did do that that'd be fucking awesome man <laughs> do you have a do you have anything that you've ever wanted to tell people about your craftsmanship or musicianship that might be like a secret that maybe you can fill us in on any kind of special sauce that you have during your songs recording or not um i recorded my song safe throw in my car and my song pitbull in my car <laughs> really that's yeah. cool. Uh, so don't give yourself the excuse that you're limited by uh, equipment, hey. unless you really, unless you can't spend like four hundred bucks, maybe. Like I'd say four hundred bucks. Yeah. If you could, if you could spend four hundred bucks on your equipment, then you could, you could uh, get some really good songs going. So don't sell yourself short. And um, if you make bad songs, it doesn't mean you're a bad artist. Right. Uh, maybe you just, you just need to try again. <laughs> try until you get it right right yeah if you guys have you any the same oh, thing. yeah i mean you can maybe like do it better the second time yeah like at least iterate a little bit yeah like modify it modification for sure for sure um if you guys have any questions for him yourself let us know if not it's totally fine too um do you have any advice for people that are starting out um just uh listen to what you feel about the song like if you think it's good um you should seek that gratification internally uh instead of your peers like you don't need your real life peers acceptance you can yeah. get acceptance from people on the internet and it's just as valuable you know like you don't even have to tell your peers i didn't tell my peers in real life really 
about my my making music like a lot yeah. of people that i know still have no idea really yeah they still have no idea i bet and i don't mind it i honestly kind of like it that way because yeah. i want my music to speak for itself i don't want to have to go and tell someone like oh you have to you owe me this yeah like, you're not you're not owed anything as an artist mm -hmm. as a as a human like really besides basic human rights i guess but that's a whole no whole nother thing but uh <laughs> as an artist in the music you're not entitled that's a better way to put it yeah there we you're go you're not entitled to anything yeah and uh once you realize that it's gonna help you create better songs and just do what you want and you'll be like yo people might vibe with this screamo shit right they might, they might be like yo this is sick as hell not for sure it's definitely it's definitely strange when you're doing new shit um do you uh do you have any thoughts on pay for plays like how uh, like they have like spotify playlists or like playlists yeah. on youtube and stuff i think that if you pay for pay to be put on playlists for spotify and the audience is real i think that's fair i think that's fine mm. i think that if you pay for fake plays like bots i think that yeah. that's not fine and that's stupid it's weird but it's just like investing in yourself like any yeah. like any anything in the world in the planet that is supposed to be a, a media product, you're going to have investments in marketing it. So, uh, yeah, invest in yourself. Put money into playlists. Put money into ads. Whatever you want to try. If you earned it and it's your money, especially, you know, invest in yourself. Don't – I wouldn't say, you know, waste it. Like, you, you could test it out and maybe you'll do something you never expected with it. Hey, bet. Um, Bloodlish asks, do you like Porter Robinson? Uh, that's the DJ, right? <laughs> I, I think it's a DJ. Know. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I don't really know his just I don't know his uh, track list or discography, but super hard. Know, and one thing about me, if I'm pull, if I'm like, if I like the music, I love to dance. Like, yeah, I love dancing. I am. When I was in college, like I would always you be were dancing all the time. Gym. Yeah, I like to dance too, I, honestly. Yeah, because sometimes you it's can't fun. say anything. It's yeah. like a way to communicate without talking do you like do you do like step up like yes okay. sir yeah yes, uh, sir. Shit. let's I'm go to, i'm about to get it bro no, that's tight <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's super fucking cool dude you gotta make some tiktoks man i want to see the whole box i know bro Whoa. come on shit that'd be, that'd be fucking tight man um what is the best move you've ever made you think in music the best move I ever made. Yeah, like this move, you made it, and you're like, "Whoa, that was uh, that was crazy." Or has that not happened yet? I think dropping Degrassi on my own. Yeah. Uh, once it got like forty thousand plays, mm. and people were like, "Yo, this is this is good." I was like, "Oh shit, bro! Like people might actually like like my songs," uh, and it gave me confidence to drop a second song. That's so cool. just dropping, just dropping one song and just on my own, like yeah. I, I myself said, I'm doing this. It showed me, like it gave, it made me believe in myself, and I think that has made the difference ever since then. Fuck yeah, man, that's awesome. That's a, that's a fucking really good feeling when you're like actually seeing that people are vibing with your shit. You're like no fucking yeah. way. <laughs> um, do you have any top people in the underground or mainstream? Top rappers. Yeah, I mean, or like, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess just musicians. They don't have to be like rappers or anything. Kid X. Kid X. Uh, KVN. KVN seven seven L. That's a that's a that's a name. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, KVN. that's super unique. KVN seven seven L. Yeah. Idris Ali. Shouts out all the homies. Prompto. Hey. Zell. Like at a certain point. I don't. I don't want to just keep saying things like saying names to be yeah. polite. You know, like I feel like, yeah. Just say, say you can just say two names and be like, "That's it." <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, think, I think it doesn't matter. Really skilled, uh, yeah, they're tight as fuck. And there's no like listing or anything. It's not like one, two, three. Just whoever no, you I fuck think with. Those two, like, like people are like the underground competitions. Yeah. Like, I don't know. If that's those really videos bad. are kind of strange, huh? When they put like verses or whatever. I don't know if you've oh, seen no, those on like YouTube. Fine. Like, but you think? I think when you're really low, when you're like, like when you're on just starting as an underground artist, yeah. and they're like, "Yo, let's join this tournament where it's just popularity contest." Yeah, it's very strange. Like where they try to put all. I need that clout. 
<laughs> yeah, I put all the artists against each other. Like, uh, that's fucking weird. Eh, people got to get it somehow, I guess, but I don't yeah, think that's one... the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had fun today, man. I appreciate your time. Do you have anything that these people need to know about you before this is over? Um, no, I would just say thanks so much for having me. Yeah, and, it was tight. Like, it's been awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I think and we're going to try it. That... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, okay? I just want to say thanks to anyone that uh, listens to my music or like contributes to the art community uh, in the underground. And if you have any takeaway that maybe just like uh, what I was saying about like we should all maybe try to lift each other up more, uh, that would be the one thing that I think I hope I hope that pe you know people will take away is that we if we help each other out like. You know, as artists, it will make us stronger because it can be it can be really hard being an artist, and I uh, I can relate to that. So I feel I feel for that, and I just really mess with people that bound themselves and bound their creativity, and I think it's one of the most respectable things that you can do. So to all my artists out there, shout out to you. Oh yeah, well damn, that's awesome. Thanks again for your time, dude. This has been a fucking pleasure. <laughs>